All right, everybody, we're going to talk about cartooning. Um, I'm going to first cover some theoretical concepts. Um, this is a slight departure from manga, but understanding semiotics, um, symbolism, iconography um, is going to be useful uh, scaffolding for understanding the visual communication in comics and manga. So uh, I'm going to start with presenting this piece by Rene Magritte called This Is Not a Pipe. Okay, this is not a pipe. So what does that mean? It's obviously a pipe, right? Um, what does it mean if it's not a pipe? Okay, technically it's a drawing of a pipe, right? It's a representation of an actual pipe. And to be even more precise, this is a virtual copy of a drawing of a pipe. Um, technically, it is in fact not a pipe. But why is it that when we see this image, we register the image projection as a pipe? So we're gonna talk about icons, which is any image used to represent a person, place, thing, or idea. We can divide icons into a few different categories. First, we have symbols, right? These are images used to represent ideas, concepts, and philosophies, okay? Got a check mark, we got arrow, these are ideas. Uh, Wi-Fi symbol, yin yang, infinity, luck. We have gender symbolism, uh, we have a cross, treble clef, a lot of different things, right? These are kinds of icons. Under the umbrella of icons, these are symbols. These are also symbols, okay? So flags, right? They represent an idea of, of philosophy, right? Uh, next, we have the icons of science, language, and communication. We can call these the icons of the practical realm, okay? I want you to pay attention here. We, both, we have both numbers and letters. Um, those are icons. Um, so if letters are icons, what does that make words? Finally, we have pictures. So this is usually what comes to mind when we hear the word icon. Um, in this lecture, I'm giving you a more expansive definition of what icon uh, means. So uh, pictures are images that are designed to actually resemble their subjects, okay? So we have um, representational sort of abstract icons, right? Letters and numbers. They don't look like the thing. Um, flags, this doesn't look like the thing. These symbols don't look like the thing. These are icons. These are also icons, but pictures look like the thing. Um, these are icons as well, right? Drawings. These are pictures. These are icons. Pictures are pictures and drawings are unique icons uh, because of their variance and the complexity of information that they provide. In pictures, the level of iconic content varies, and it could be said that pictures are more iconic than uh, symbols and other icons like the ones we saw before. Because in pictures, meaning is fluid and variable according to the appearance. Let's look at some more icons. So uh, what do we see here? If I asked you what any of these were, you could answer simply Apple. Um, however, seeing them in juxtaposition can give us insight on when, where, and why we should use any one of them in a piece that we create. Remember, we're talking about art making. We're talking about drawing comics, telling stories. All of that is about communication, right? So um, each one of these icons is laced with its own sub-meaning. Not only are you communicating Apple, in some of these cases, you're also communicating something else. That's what I mean by sub-meaning. We're going to talk about subtext later when we talk about fictional storytelling. Anyway, um, they don't get more or less meaningful as they get more or less abstracted, which is the big takeaway here. They don't get more or less meaningful as they get more or less abstracted. The meaning simply changes. We go from the left, a realistic rendition of an apple, um, to the abstract idea of apple, and even further, to an image that's laced with all kinds of other meaning, right? You think computers, technology, business, um, and finally, to the word Apple itself, which this one is interesting. Remember, it's an icon. It's a picture because it's a collection of icons. Um, this uh, word Apple is simultaneously the most pure and the most abstract representation of an apple, right? What do I mean by pure? Uh, for example, the, the sort of charcoal graphite looking drawing. It's not necessarily pure because, of course, it makes you think of the idea of an apple, but you can also think of the idea of drawing, 
right? Or fine arts. Um, the one on the left, you could think uh, photograph. The one in the middle, you could think icon. You could think uh, graphic, computer graphics, something like that. Um, when you look at the word Apple, you think Apple. That's it, right? Um, so what are we looking at here? What's different about these icons and what's similar? Again, we're moving from realistic representation to abstract iconic representation. But they all still register as faces. And first of all, for those of you who don't know, the, the image on the far left, that's a drawing of Clint Eastwood, um, who's a famous action movie star, made a lot of uh, cowboy movies in the Wild West genre. Um, it's before your time. It's before my time as well. Um, but I just think it's a useful um, example for what I'm trying to illustrate. Anyway, um, again, this is a drawing. So photographs and realistic drawings are the icons that most closely resemble their real life counterparts. There's still many things that separate this from an actual face, just like that drawing of a pipe we saw by Rene Magritte technically isn't a pipe, right? This is flat doesn't have any color but as an icon as icons go this is about as representational to the real thing as you can get however that does not necessarily mean that the realistic representation is more valuable than an abstracted face as a representation of a particular idea remember icons are about representing ideas they don't always have to look like the thing in order to represent it Right. So let me give you an example. Um, so the image on the left of the hyper realistic Clint Eastwood portrait, that is definitely Clint Eastwood. It can't be anybody else, but also it can only be Clint Eastwood at a particular age and a particular time in his life. Right. This is a drawing of Clint Eastwood, the actor of a particular age. It's very specific. The more realistic you draw something, the more specific it is. Right. The less your imagination can flow in and come up with other ideas. The one on the right, it's still definitely Clint Eastwood. Right. hundred percent. Um, but now we're thinking about Clint Eastwood's roles in film. We're not thinking about Clint Eastwood necessarily at, necessarily at a particular age. We might be thinking of a span of like even up to a decade. Right. Um, so abstraction allows us to add character to a drawing outside the limitations of strict representation right now we have three so as we get more abstract we can choose to highlight certain aspects of a design by exaggerating or de-emphasizing certain elements so we start from very realistic um very complex to more simple and more iconic but on the left this can only be clint eastwood the actor in a particular time in his life in the middle this is Clint Eastwood or somebody who looks like Clint Eastwood that's definitely um, referencing Clint Eastwood in cowboy movies. On the right, that's just like a cowboy dude, right? So there's different meanings associated with them. It gets more open as you get more abstract. Even in the case of extreme abstraction, enough information remains for us to still understand what this is, right? And with a few added icons, we can virtually reproduce the same idea as the realistic drawing. As we simplify, we move further and further from a realistic representation of an idea. So then why is it that the images on the right are just as acceptable to us in our minds as the realistic representation of those ideas on the left? Why do those still register as like human character or apple? Why do we recognize both of these icons as faces? And what does this tell us about the power of cartoons? Why would anybody respond more to a cartoon than a realistic image? When we abstract into a simplified cartoon, we don't just remove detail. We home in to focus on specific details. Cartooning is the process of simplification in order to focus attention on an idea. Say it one more time. Cartooning is the process of simplification in order to focus attention on an idea. It's communication. Cartoons retain and can even enhance meaning. And certain icons carry such a rich cultural history that they elicit a psychological response 
as soon as we see them. There is something to say for the universality of cartoon imagery. For example, the more cartoony a face is, the more people it could be said to describe. And specificity isn't always necessarily better than ambiguity. It really depends on what you want to communicate. That could only be a red apple, right, uh, on the left, like a specific type. I don't know if it's like gala or whatever. I'm not an apple expert. Anyway, that's one type of apple. In the middle, that could be a lot of different kinds of apples. On the right, that could be even more, right? The, it gets more ambiguous. Um, what it could represent as an idea grows, the more abstract and iconic we get. Abstraction allows the reader to extend their imagination beyond the limits of a single character. With less details, the viewer can add more of their own imagination. Um, this is from Yotsubato which is a great example of simplified cartooning used for communication. The manga is a slice of life that follows a curious little girl named Yotsuba who goes on mundane adventures in a new neighborhood. Her simplistic cartoony design is more fun and relatable than a realistic depiction would be. You can almost imagine her as any little kid that you've met. And the artist's skill in drawing backgrounds helps us to imagine Yotsuba's whimsical personality in a realistic setting. This abstract character design superimposed over realistic backgrounds is a clever use of visual storytelling. But what is it that we're really seeing here when we look at this stick figure? In reality, it's just a few dots and lines. And the fact that our brains are turning this into a face um, is pretty incredible. But what's even more interesting than that is the fact that your brain won't let you see anything but a face here. Humans are very self-centered and we look our, we always look for ourselves in everything that we see. Right? We can't help it. And whenever we create we make the abstract world in our own image. Even when we remove and exaggerate details, we construct the world based on our own perceptions of reality. Cartooning is a method of drawing that takes advantage of our own preconceived notions about the world by using abstract icons in which we can recognize complex ideas. That's what cartooning is. We see faces in everything. We can't help it. And the less specific an icon of a face becomes, the easier it is for readers to relate to it. Cartoons are interesting icons um, because we recognize them as living beings. They're still abstract enough to allow interpretations laced with underlying meaning, though. With simplified designs, Cartoonists use tools like color, outfit, and expression to communicate a character's personality, traits, and behavior. Um, let's see, for example, if I asked you um, of these three, which one is the protagonist, right? Which one is the best friend? Um, and which one is the villain? You can guess based on the design, the color, um, and some of the mannerisms below, right? The villain, he's got his hands on his hips. He's angry. We see fists. The protagonist, Big thumbs up. Also, we see blue, right? You think Goku, something like that. It's sort of like a more stronger primary color. The best friend, which is a deuteragonist, right? Side character, he's orange. It's not a primary color. He's got his hand open. He's helping, right? All these different signifiers and clues to tell us, even if you've never played Sonic, you can tell who's the main character, who's the antagonist, who's the deuteragonist, and so on. An objectively representational icon, like this drawing here, while certainly drawn beautifully, leaves no room for imagination or iconic expression. But a simpler icon leaves room for endless possibilities. That's the theory, anyway. Um, okay, now we got some homework. So what I want you to do 
is you have two assignments. The first one, pull up some cartoon images and I want you to copy them. Okay. You're going to draw with a pencil and then you're going to ink your drawings. I want you to find two characters that are from the same story and I want you to draw them. Now, how realistic or abstract of an image you decide to copy is totally up to you. The point is we learn how to draw by copying. I want you to focus on the line drawings of the figures, right? I want you to focus on line. I'm not too worried about shading or value or color. I want line. Um, as you copy, here's some things to think about. What are the signifiers that tell me these characters are related? What unifies these characters? What sets them apart? What does their design or color say about their role in the story? Next, um, your second assignment. After you've completed those two drawings, I want you to design your own two original characters and they must be from the same story. How representational, realistic, or abstract and iconic you wanna get, that's up to you. Um, but what I want you to do is to try to come up with a duo that complement or contrast with each other, right? Those of you who are familiar with Naruto, right? Naruto and Sasuke, orange and blue. That's good right there. Those are complementary colors. Um, look at their hair. Um, look at the way that they act. But there are some things that tie them together. Um, for, for some reason, everybody in Naruto has sandals on. That's one thing. Everybody's got a headband. Um, so things that tie them together in a common universe, but also things that make them distinct. Okay? I want you to make a duo. Here's another one. Jesse and James. Classic. Um, think about design, shape, outfit, color, personality, and motive when you create your duo. I don't need you to write anything. That's just for you. Okay? So to sum it up, you got two assignments. Um, one, copy a cartoon duo. Right? Uh, spend some time on the drawing. Pencil it. Ink it. They can be in one drawing. They can be two separate sheets of paper. But I want you to ink it and erase the pencil lines. You don't need to color it. That's fine. Um, number two, uh, create your own original cartoon duo. Again, ink your drawings and erase the pencil. You don't need to color, but you can. And that's all I got for this lesson.